Falling is a famous cartoonist who is deceived by his company and wants to find a powerful lawyer to fight against them. He finds the perfect person for that job, but the only problem is that the lawyer doesn't want to get paid through money and would prefer if Fong obeyed his special requests instead. Yan is trying his best to feed the kid as much as he can, in the hope that he will grow taller, but soon realizes that it may not work. During the conversation, Chi Anma was zoned out, not focusing on anything, which alerts Fanga as he realizes that Chi Anmo has been like this since he finished talking to his uncle. He pays too much attention toward the person he claims he doesn't have feelings for. Suddenly, Yan asks them about their plans for the evening, to which Chi Anmo replies that he will let Fanga decide their plans. Fanga is startled by the sudden attention, but quickly replies that he really wishes to go to Tana Lat, but with his injury, it will be difficult. Chi Anmo softly replies that they will go to Tana Lat and he will help Fanga move around in a wheelchair. A green flag main lead is the most attractive thing. Yan quickly says they will also tag along, and the group doesn't waste any time going on their trip. When they reach Tana Lot, Fanga is mesmerized by the unique temple building surrounded by water. He quickly starts taking pictures as Yan proudly says that the place looks more beautiful when the tide rises. Fanga excitedly says that they should take a look inside. Yan and the kid quickly start walking without waiting for them, as Yan keeps scolding the child for running too fast. Fang Gu smiles to see that, happy that a child also likes the place, and turns around to share his thoughts with Chi Anmo. He is surprised to find Chi Anmo looking like he will throw up at any moment. He quickly asks Chi Anmo if he is all right, but the lawyer is deep in his thoughts. After seeing the sea, Chi Anmo is reminded of a horrible accident from his childhood when his mother tried to drown him. As he struggled to breathe in the water, she kept crying, saying that she had no other option but to sacrifice him, as this was the only way she could get what she wanted. In the present, Fang Ga watches Chi Anmo mumbling something, looking extremely pale, so he quickly rushes forward to pull Chi Anmo from his panicked state. He is more shocked when he notices a tear slipping from Chi Anmo's eyes and softly cups his cheek, asking him why he cried. Chi Anmo quickly collects himself and responds that it is just because something got into his eye. Fang Ga is still worried and offers to help Chi Anmo, but he refuses, insisting that he is fine. Chi Anmo diverts the topic as he reminds Fang Ga that he shouldn't have stood up like that because his knees are still injured. Just on cue, Fang Ga's knees start to hurt, and they notice the wounds are bleeding again. Chi Anmo helps him sit back down, all the while scolding him for being reckless. Fang Ga is more focused on him as he notices how Chi Anmo's hands are cold and shaking. Their chemistry is unmatched. When Chi Anmo offers to take him to the temple, Fang Ga instead says that he is thirsty, so they should go to the shop instead. At the cafe, they are calmly sipping their drinks when Fang Ga asks the lawyer if he is alright, mentioning how he looked really pale at the sight of water. He asks Chi Anmo if he is afraid of water. Chi Anmo tries to say that he is not afraid, but Fang Ga interrupts him, saying that it must be because he drowned when he was young because the exact same thing happened to him. He explains how he started learning to swim after that and soon got over his fear of water. Kangamiya replies that his case is more complicated, but not wanting to go into details, he says that he will tell Fang Ga about it later. Shi Anmo changes the topic suddenly, saying that when Yan is back, he will ask him to take Fang Ga to the temple. Fang Ga replies that he doesn't want to see the temple from inside while secretly worried about leaving Chi Anmo's alone here. His declaration makes Chi Anmo happy, as he mischievously asks Fang Ga if it is because he just wants to stay with him. Fang Ga is happy at being teased and replies that he just doesn't want to bother someone else. Chi Anmo chuckles at that and says that Fang Ga can ask him anything since he practically belongs to him. After deciding on staying behind, Chi Anmo announces that he will tell Fang Ga a story to get rid of his boredom. Chi Anmo starts his story without waiting for any response. He says that when he was still in school, the top student of his class was a loner, and later on he transferred schools. He asks Fang Ga to guess the reason. But after Fang Ga fails to provide a suitable answer, he continues his story. Chi Anmo tells him that it was because the top boy was emotionally abused at home. His mother cloned to a married man and only birthed him for the money, which made it hard for him to be recognized by anyone. To deal with the trauma that your parents gave you is the most hardest thing in the world. Fang Ga replies that the boy is not at fault, but his statement seems to anger Chi Anmo. Chi Anmo quickly asks why the boy is not at fault because even his birth was a mistake. Fang Ga calmly replies that no one deserves to be treated like that at birth. He continues that humans have long lives, so even if life is not good for the boy at first, 
he will eventually find someone who will truly care for him and will always stay by his side. Chi An Mo is taken aback by the unexpected sweet statement as Fong Gus says that he wishes that boy found someone like that. Our little painter is very optimistic. Hopefully, his positivity will rub off on Chi An Mo too. Chi An Mo is dazed by the hopeful words of Fong Ga and asks him if he really thinks that can happen. Fong Ga instead shared his story, telling Chi An Mo that when he moved away after a fight with his family, he was also very disheartened. Even though his story is not like that of that boy, he still wants to advise him that there are surprises in life, so we shouldn't give up so early. Chi An Mo smiles at that and suddenly hugs Fong Ga, surprising the painter with his sudden actions. He then pulls back a little and looks at Fong Ga's blushing face, telling him how he wishes they could have met earlier. He softly rubs Fong Ga's hair, declaring how he would have loved to pick up Fong Ga when he was homeless. The softest touches from Chi An Mo are giving me butterflies. Chi An Mo pushes their foreheads together, saying that if they had met earlier, Fong Ga would have belonged to him. A few days have passed since their trip to Tan a lot, and Fong Ga's wounds are almost healed. Chi An Mo encourages him to try walking, but he can't hold back his smile when Fong Ga waddles around, looking like he forgot to walk. Fang Ga is angry at his laugh and almost yells at him, saying that Chi An Mo was the one who insisted on him sitting in the wheelchair. Chi An Mo quickly apologizes, saying it was his fault and tells Fang Ga to be careful while walking. He already has the qualities of a good husband. Suddenly remembering something, Chi An Mo says that he has to go out for a while today as he needs to get some work done. Fang Ga sharply says that he doesn't care about what Chi An Mo does but is interrupted by the sudden kiss on the cheek from the lawyer. He just stands there with his red cheeks as Chi An Mo leaves after blowing him another kiss. When he is left alone, Fang Ga can't help but think about how Chi An Mo is getting more clingy. He is relieved by the fact that they will soon leave Bali because his legs are almost healed now. Fang Ga is thinking that when they return to China, everything will go back to normal, which is good since there shouldn't be a romantic relationship between two men. He comes out at his thoughts when the doorbell rings. Surprised, he stumbles toward the door only to find Ren Ji Ya shouting at him for ghosting her. Ren Ji Ya sits on the sofa, glaring at Fang Ga, who offers her a cold drink in the hope of calming her down. She ignores his offer and instead asks him to tell her his current situation. Fang Ga sheepishly says that nothing is happening with him as he just came to vacation with a friend, a friend who has already claimed Fang Ga as his own. Ren Ji Ya is not fooled by his act, as she replies that an introvert like him can come to Bali with a man whom he has known for less than a month. Fang Ga quickly says that things happen differently sometimes, but he didn't mean to leave without saying goodbye. Ren Ji Ya is not focused on his answer, as she instead stares at the love bite on his collarbone. Fang Ga is oblivious to her stare and asks her how she found out about him. Ren Ji Ya replies that this hotel is one of their branches. Not being able to hold herself back, Ren Ji Ya asks him about his relationship with Qian Mo. Fang Ga laughs sheepishly at the question as he gulps the drink he brought for Ren and quickly says that he is just friends with Chi An Mo. Ren Ji Ya suddenly stands up, telling him not to make excuses and asking him if he still wants to reconcile with his parents. Fang Ga is surprised by the sudden question, so Ren Ji Ya explains that you know he looks fine. She knows that he misses home. Ren Ji Ya continues to say that he has to think carefully about it because his parents were so cruel when his friends confessed to him. She says that if he really does like men, then it will be impossible for him to go back. Mention of his parents sends Fang Ga into his past as he recalls his fight with his parents. His mother has told him how his father has found a job for him, but when he tried to protest, his father got angry and shouted at him for being ungrateful. Fang Ga didn't back down as he reminded his parents how they changed his college entrance exams and made Kong Young transfer. Mentioning his friend has infuriated his father more as he throws a bin at Fang Ga that hit him in the head. His mother rushed to help him, but his father kept shouting at him, saying he should leave the house if he thought like that. Instead of stopping his father, his mother only asked him to apologize to his father and not talk back. In the present, Fang Ga sits on the sofa as he recalls those dark memories. Ren Ji Ya left a few moments ago after telling him to carefully think about the situation. He is thinking about how his parents will react if he actually gets together with Chi An Mo one day. He comes out of these thoughts when Chi An Mo suddenly comes there and asks him why he is in such deep thoughts and not practicing walking. When he stays silent, Chi An Mo offers to treat him to a delicious meal, but he sharply refuses the offer. Chi An Mo is surprised by the sudden hostile behavior and is more confused when Fang Gus says that he has to tell him something. Fang Gan has finally gathered some courage to tell Chi An Mo about his past, not wanting to drag this any further. 
Before he can say something, Chi Anmo's phone starts ringing, and he excuses himself, saying that he need to take this call. After Chi Anmo walks away, Fan Ga scolds himself for being a coward, as he just needs to cut all ties with Chi Anmo, which shouldn't be this hard. Even after moving away, Fan Ga is still afraid of his parents, which just shows how much trauma they caused him. I just hope he will get over it soon. He looks up when he hears the door click and sees Chi Anmo, who whispers that he will be back soon. Fan Ga plops back down on the sofa as he keeps wondering if the love between two men is really possible. Meanwhile, outside the room, Chi An Mo encounters Ren Ji Ya and introduces himself as Fan Ka's boyfriend. Ren Ji Ya tells him that she is the elder sister of Fan Ga and says that they should talk inside. Before they can leave, she advises him not to forge a relationship, saying that it can cause troubles in the future. Chi An Mo only replies that it is not forging if it is meant to be. I love how confident he is about their relationship. He then says that it is truly bothersome that she tried to take advantage of the situation when Fang Ga was alone. Ren Ji Ya sharply says that he can leave if he comes here to argue. Chi An Mo asks her what she said to Fang Ga as he looks so sad, but Ren refuses to tell him anything. He is frustrated at the situation and shouts at Ren Ji Ya, asking if she doesn't care about how alone and sad Fang Ga is. Ren Ji Ya is also furious as she yells back that Chi An Mo pulled irrelevant people into his business, which was very evil. She continues that she doesn't care about Chi An Mo's family, but Fang Ga's parents will never let him be together with a man. Chi An Mo realizes that this was the reason Fang Ga looked so down. Ren Ji Ya adds that if he really cares about Fang Ga, he shouldn't force him into any difficult situation. Chi An Mo replies that he will not force Fang Ga for anything. But he also wishes that Ren Ji Ya would not interfere again and let Fang Ga make his own decisions. Fang Ga has fallen asleep on the couch and is woken up by a delicious scent invading his nose. He slowly sits up and looks around, only to find Yan sitting there with a the kid in front of the table, filled with food. Startled, Fang Ga asks them, Why did they come here? Yan replies that they came here just now and asked Fang Ga if he is sleepy because he didn't rest well at night. Yan just wants some spicy details, just like us. Fang Ga nervously replies that it is just because he can't move much due to his leg, so he has fallen asleep on the couch. Just then, Chi An Mo enters the house and Yan quickly turns his attention toward food, saying they can eat now. Chi An Mo goes straight toward Fang Ga and tells him that the kid wanted to meet him so they could play. He continues that Fang Ga looks very sad, so he invited Yan and the kid over. He then softly asks Fang Ga if he is happy now. Fang Ga just replies that he is not sad and again tries to tell Chi An Mo about his decision, but is interrupted by Chi An Mo who instead turns toward food. Chi An Mo points at the kid, saying that he will eat everything if they don't start eating soon. Fang Ga starts eating too, thinking that he will tell Chi An Mo about him later. After finishing eating, Yan grabs the kid, whom he named Yosha, in his arms and leaves the apartment after waving them goodbye. Once they are left alone, Chi An Mo says to Fang Ga that he has to tell him something. But for that, they have to go somewhere else. He brings Fang Ga outside on the balcony, and as they stand leaning over the railing, he asks Fang Ga if he remembers their first meeting. Chi An Mo reminds Fang Ga of how he spilled coffee on him when they first met. Fang Ga is a little worried while reminiscing about the past, as Chi An Mo continues that back then he just wanted to teach Fang Ga a lesson for throwing coffee at him. He softly strokes Fang Ga's cheek and reveals that he invited him to the banquet as a prank, but that night took an unexpected turn, a prank that ended in them sleeping together. Chi An Mo stares at Fang Ga and confesses that he has sunk deep into his own trap. Can we consider this a confession? Fang Ga is confused by Chi An Mo's statement and can't understand what it really means. The little painter is so clueless. Before he can think about it further, Chi An Mo cups his face softly, just as the fireworks goes off in the background. Chi An Mo doesn't get a chance to say anything as Fang Ga quickly turns around to look at the fireworks. Chi An Mo softly asks him if he likes it but Fang Ga can't understand if he is talking about fireworks or this moment between them. Chi An Mo slowly intervenes their hands and says that if Fang Ga likes this, they can stand closer and watch this. Eventually, they both sit on the floor and Fang Ga dejectedly says that his friend came to Bali as well and he wants to go back to China with her. Chi An Mo knows that he can't force Fang Ga into anything, so he just softly replies that it is fine. Fang Ga is worried about Chi An Mo being angry, but he realizes that he would be angry too if he confessed to someone and they ignored him. 
He buries his face in his knees and says that Chi Anmo got something wrong because he is not a person worthy of love. Chi Anmo just softly runs his head, asking if he wants to get complimented even though he rejected his confession. Chi Anmo looked evil in the starts, but he is so sweet. Fang Gu deserves someone like him. Fang Gu quickly defends himself, saying that he didn't mean it like that. Chi Anmo just softly smiles in return, saying that to him. Fang Gu is just very gullible, which makes him wonder what he should do to him. Before Fang Gu can think something bad about himself, Chi Anmo adds that he still can't stop thinking about how adorable Fang Gu is. To him, Fang Gu is a bright sun, and since he was not very careful, he accidentally got trapped by his innocence. Fang Gu is blushing madly at the sweet confession of Chi Anmo and asks him how he came up with such words. Chi Anmo raises his hand to touch Fang, asking him if he is feeling shy. Fang Gu quickly slaps his hand away, warning him not to pinch his face. He then adds that Kiemo must have said such sweet words to many other people in his life. Chi Anmo replies that he only said things like this to Fang Gu, just like he already said that he only held hands with him. Fang Gu doesn't believe his words, thinking that Chi Anmo can't be an expert at these things without saying it to anyone else. Someone is jealous. Sensing his hesitance, Chi Anmo quickly explains that he doesn't like Bo Wen and only dated him because he had no other choice at that time. Fang Gu is shocked to hear that he was forced into a relationship. Seeing his surprise reaction, Kaim quickly says that he is not weak and never lets himself lose in anything. Fang Gu instead asks him about his family, to which Chi Anmo replies that his relationship with his family is not good, just like Fang Gu. Fang Gu is still not satisfied with the answers, as he mentions how people still frown upon gay relationships and asks Chi Anmo if he is not worried about others' opinions. Chi Anmo calmly replies that in life, if your partner is someone you don't like, then it will only end in suffering. He continues that there are billions of people on earth, but we can only meet some of them, and the chances of falling for them are lower. He wraps an arm around Fang Gu's shoulder and says that it is a miracle if a person gets a chance to meet their soulmates in life. Wish everyone in the world can understand this and stop trying to force people away from their loved ones. Fang Gu looks at his shoulder where Chi Anmo has tightened his grip and says that he is lucky to find his soulmates and wouldn't let him go just because of other people's opinions. His words make Fang Gu change his decision, as he keeps thinking that he will regret his decision if he rejects Chi Anmo now. Just then, Chi Anmo points out that the fireworks are already over. Fang Gu stares into his eyes as he says that seeing these fireworks will be one of his most precious memories. Chi Anmo softly presses a kiss on his hand as Fang Gu continues to say that he hopes this moment will also be a pleasant memory for Chi Anmo. The next day, Chi Anmo is leaning over the railing, looking at the sea. Yan is standing beside him and offers to help him if he wants to stop Fang Gu from going back. Chi Anmo replies that he doesn't need Yan's help because he will also go back in two days. Yam is not happy with his answer and reminds him how he has been acting so depressed ever since Fang Gu left. Chi Anmo quickly defends himself, saying that he just got a little sad because, in these last words, he became used to Fang Gu's presence. Yan makes fun of him for being clingy, but quickly gets serious as he says it is good because Chi Anmo can deal with his father when he goes back without getting Fang Gu involved in his problems. Chi Anmo admits that he was impatient last night, but once he got Fang Gu to commit, he wouldn't have to worry about anything. He is just worried because Fang Gu is so timid, and he can't do anything about it. Yan just laughs at the fact that Chi Anmo doesn't have any other plans and just tells him to give Fang Gu some space. Yan is such a mode, as he gives his full support, but also makes fun of his nephew at every possible chance. Meanwhile, Fang Gu is in deep sleep as he sits on the plane beside Ren, who wakes him up, informing him that they are about to land. After their plane lands, they both come out of the airport together, and Fang Gu is surprised to see a huge banner welcoming Ren back home. When he asked her about it, she just asks him to ignore it. Ren tries to rush out of there, but is stopped by another woman. Fang Gu is mesmerized by the beauty of this woman, but Ren is unfazed as she scolds the woman for abandoning her job for such things. The woman only replies that welcoming Ren is not a waste of time. Just then, she notices Fang Gu, who is startled by the sharp glares of the woman. She asks Ren about Fang Gu. To which Ren replies that he is her junior and says that they can talk some other day because she has to go somewhere. Ren is surprised when the woman stands right in front of her and says that Ren always runs away from her. She leans back a little, and this time she sharply asks Ren if she even cares that her dad wants her to marry some random person. Ren is shocked to hear that, as the woman dejectedly says that her family can't reject the offer because it is from the Qian family. 
Ren drops Fan Ga off at his house and advises him to take care of himself since he lives alone. Fan Ga assures her that he will be fine and then asks her if her friend is in some kind of trouble. Before Ren can answer him, the woman from the car asks Ren if she's finished talking because her license can be invalidated if she stops here any longer. Ren excuses herself from Fan Ga, telling him that she will visit him sometime later. As she moves to go back to her car, the woman keeps glaring at Fan Ga, openly showing her hatred toward him. As the car drives away, Fan Ga stands there dejectedly, sad that he didn't get a chance to ask which Chi An family the girls were talking about. He can't help but wonder if they were talking about Chi An Mo's family, but he quickly dismisses his thoughts, not wanting to think about the lawyer any further. It seems it will take a lot more effort for him to get rid of the lawyer's thoughts. Fan Ga goes back after shopping for some snacks and is welcomed by his editor, who seems overly enthusiastic about his return. Fan Ga is surprised by the intense reaction and asks the editor to stand up. The editor leans back against the wall and says that Fan Ga is the only one who can help him, but he can't get mad at him. Fan Ga is confused by his statement, and seeing that, the editor quickly holds his hand and reveals that their boss wants to take back the lawsuit against Fan Ga. He adds that if Fan Ga dropped the lawsuit, their boss would agree to compensate him for it. Fan Ga doesn't believe him, so the editor quickly adds that the boss told him that personally. He says that the lawsuit has become a hot topic and will affect Fan Ga's adaptation project. Fan Ga calmly replies that if Han Chuan really wants to do this, he should bring a legal agreement because his words have no legal validity. The editor quickly replies that he just forgot to bring the document, while secretly annoyed with the fact that Fan Ga is not very clueless. Fan Ga says that they will talk later since he is tired from traveling and moves away, ignoring the editor's pleas. Fan Ga is gullible, but thank God he doesn't got stuck in his ex-boss's trap. When he is left alone, Fan Ga sits beside a wall, frustrated by the fact that Chuan only wants this agreement because he is losing the lawsuit. Just then, his phone starts ringing, and he is surprised to see that Chi Anmo is calling him. Despite his hesitation, Fan Ga picks up the call and sharply asks Chi Anmo what he wants. The lawyer replies that he just misses him and asks him if he ate since he must have reached his house by now. Fan Ga is speechless for a moment, but then says that Chi Anmo should be worried about him. He can't help but feel guilty about the attention, since he can't offer anything in return. Chi An Mo is surprised to hear that Fan Go wants to cut all ties with him after spending just one day without him. Instead of getting sad, Chi An Mo asks Fan Ga if he is doing this because he is afraid to actually fall in love with him. Fan Ga quickly denies that, saying he is not falling for him. Chi An Mo changes the topic as he asks Fan Ga, who upsets him because he sounds so gloomy. Fan reluctantly tells about the offer he got from his former boss. Chi Anmo shouts at him that he can't accept the offer because Chuan should apologize to him properly and compensate him with money for all the damage he has done to him. Fan Gut timidly says thanks to Chi Anmo for his advice, who reminds him that he already promised to protect him until the end. Chi Anmo doesn't miss any chance of flirting. Fan Gut can't bear any more confessions, so he quickly hangs up the phone and keeps thinking about how Chi Anmo didn't want to lose at first, but now he's completely changed. He still doesn't want to use Chi Anmo for his own advantage and decides that it is time for him to go back to his work. The next day, Fan Ga is taking an afternoon nap when the doorbell rings. Confused, he goes to open the door and finds his editor standing there. The editor has brought the contract for him to sign and urges him to do it quickly, but Fan Ga refuses to do so. He tells the editor to leave, saying that he changed his mind about settling the conflict in private. The editor gets angry to hear this as he shouts that Fan Ga can't do this, and it was because of the company that he came to this point. He shouts that Fan Ga is not even that social and that no one else will help him in publishing. They are interrupted by a voice saying that offline activities are not standard for an author to be famous. The editor is confused, but before he could say something else, the person introduces himself as Chi Yuya and says that he is Fan Ga's new editor. Fan Ga is confused by all this while his editor recognizes Chi Yu as the famous gold medalist editor. Chi Gu glares at him sharply and says, how can he look down on the author he is planning to work with? He then asks the editor to leave, warning him that if he bothered Fan Ga again, he would be destroyed. Fan Ga has brought Chi Yu inside his house and is now preparing a drink for him. He is enchanted by the fact that a top-tier editor has approached him on his own. He even pinches himself to make sure that he is not dreaming about the situation. Fan Ga is so cute when he is lost in his own world. Just then, he notices Chi Yu looking at his drawing books and quickly snatches them away from him, telling him not to touch them. Fan Gut instantly realizes that he shouldn't offend a top-level editor and quickly apologizes for his mistake. 
To his surprise, Chi Yu just says that it was actually his fault and asks him if these drawings are part of his new project. Fang Gu sheepishly says that he just drew these last night, while thinking to himself how he just mindlessly scribbled those. Chi Yu just softly smiles at him and asks if the person he is drawing will be the main character of his new book. Before Fang Gu can reply, he comments on how the person in the drawing looks like a modern adult male and asks Fang if he wants to stick with Xiaoman on his next project. Fang Gu joins him on the sofa and reveals that he is still not sure about his project. He asks if Chi Yu has any suggestions in this regard. Chi Yu replies that the new character he is drawing fulfills the beauty standard of a male hero, so he should consider working on love stories. Fang Gu is worried to hear that and says that he has never written love stories in the past, so he doesn't know if he can do that. Chi Yu assures him that he will help him with the first episode, and then it will be easier for him to continue working on it. Fang Gu is excited to hear this and quickly says that he will work hard to finish the work. Chi Yu is surprised by how easily pleased Fang Gu is and is excited to spend his time with Chi An Mo's lover. Chi An Mo is not in the country, but he makes sure that no harms come to his sweetheart. Meanwhile, Chi An Mo has returned from Bali and gone to his father's house. His younger stepbrother welcomes him and mockingly asks him if he was praying for this day. Chi An Mo just calmly says that he doesn't believe in God and goes to leave, saying that his father wants to meet him. Before he can even finish his sentence, his brother says that he is just being delusional because even his own mother wants him dead. Chi An Mo hardly controls his anger but retaliates, telling his brother to worry for himself because his days of freedom are coming to an end now that their elder brother is seriously ill. I don't want to clap for Chi An Mo. He effectively shuts up his bratty stepbrother. Chi An Mo just walks away after that, ignoring his brother's shout that an illegitimate child shouldn't be so proud of himself. After an unpleasant encounter with his brother, Chi An Mo goes to meet his father, who orders him to stay in this house for now and meet a girl from Joe's family after three days. His father says that the Joe family is very powerful, so Chi An Mo has to take his opportunity, and later this year his identity will be revealed in public. Chi An Mo just says thank you to his father while thinking to himself that no one except Fang Ga can even come closer to ruling his heart. Three days later, Fang Ga's door bursts open early in the morning as a panting Chi Yu enters his house. He quickly asks Fang Ga if he is alright, but the other is just confused about what is happening. Chi Yu frantically asks him if he read the false statement that Yin Yu released on Weibo. Fang Ga calmly replies that he saw it. Chi Yu is confused by his calm reaction because Chi An Mo has rushed him to go and check on Fang Ga. He replies to Fang Ga that no one will believe things like this while thinking to himself about how Chi An Mo is overly worried about him. Just then, he notices Fang Ga's disheveled appearance and his red eyes. Chi Yu quickly comforts him, saying that they are just acting up. Fang Ga replies that he is alright and quickly changes the topic as he tells Chi Yu that he will finish those drafts quickly. Chi Yu says that he doesn't have to worry about that and offers to go to the beach to relax with him and his son. Fang Ga is shocked to hear that Chi Yu has a son and asks him how he has a son at such a young age. I understand Fang Ga as I was also shocked at the confession. Chi Yu just chuckles in return as he tells Fang Ga that he adopted the kid from his sister. Fang Ga is more confused to hear this and is wondering if Chi Yu has some kind of disease. His train of thought is stopped when Chi Yu scolds him for thinking nonsense and quickly explains that he has no feelings for women and adopted the kid due to family pressure. Fang Ga is dejected to hear that and can't help but wonder if one can really get the family's understanding. Meanwhile, Chi An Mo is sitting in a restaurant for his blind date with Miss Jo. Soon, Jo joins him there and starts the conversation by saying that Chi An Mo might not remember it. They have already met in court. Do you recognize this woman? Story is taking an interesting turn. Chi An Mo chuckles and replies that it is his first time meeting her, but she is slightly different from the gentle person his father described her to be. Jo replies that back then she thought he was just a lawyer from some humble family. Chi An Mo says that his father's methods can only be used to deceive a girl who has no idea about the world. He continues that she might know at this point that he is an illegitimate child, so if she doesn't want to marry him, he will tell his father on her behalf. Joe calmly replies that she is not dissatisfied and suggests that they should get married since he needs to be powerful and she has to deal with her father. Joe says that this will be just a formal contract marriage and they will live their own separate lives after being married to each other. After hearing her suggestion, Chi An Mo replies that her proposal is tempting, but he doesn't have any intentions to marry her. Joe almost shouts that it will be good for both of them and then calmly says that if he really wants to get married, she can't do that because she already likes someone else. Such a relief. When Chi An Mo says that he also likes someone, 
Joe sharply asks him why he is refusing her proposal then. She says that if he is worried about his lover misunderstanding the situation, she will explain it to her. Chi Anmo replies that his lover hates it when things are unclear, and he doesn't want to upset them at any cost. Chi Anmo is actually worried that Fan Ge will run away if he knows about this situation. Joe accepts her defeat and asks Chi Anmo about his plan since his family will never accept him marrying someone from a normal family background. Chi Anmo says that he will think about it, and since he already chose his lover, he doesn't care about his family's opinion. Joe is annoyed by his clan behavior and just simply wants to get rid of her family so she can pursue her lover. After the dinner, Chi Anmo is walking alone in the parking lot, thinking about how it is good that Joe already likes someone and is sure that she will find some way to refuse this marriage. He stops in his tracks when he hears his mother calling him. The woman quickly asks him not to walk away, saying that she wants to talk to him about something. Chi Anmo coldly replies that if it is about him being good in front of Chuan's family, she doesn't have to worry about that. His mother then asks him and his father treats him well, to which Chi Anmo replies that he will not be able to endure if his father cares for him because it has never happened before. His mother tries to apologize to him, but Chi Anmo rudely cuts her off, saying that she doesn't need to act in front of him. He continues that he will give her money if she wants, but he will never fight for the position of heir. Chi Anmo walks away after that, while his mother angrily mumbles that there is no use in giving birth to him if he will not become an heir. Chi Anmo is silently sitting in his car after the argument with his mother when his phone rings. He opens it to find a message from Chi Yu, who has sent him a picture of his son sleeping on Fan Ge's lap. Chi Anmo smiles at the picture, thinking about how Fan Ge always finds a way to make him happy. Thankfully, Chi Anmo also has someone who will help him forgetting the dark parts of his life. Fan Ge has spent a day with Chi Yu and his son Gavin, and later they drop him off at his home. He says goodbye to them as they sit in the car, ready to leave. Gavin asks him if he really can't come to their house because he still wants to hear his stories. Chi Yu gently tells his son that Fan Ge has to go back home, but he will tell him bedtime stories. Gavin dejectedly accepts this and promises to visit Fan Ge during the holidays. Fan Ge assures him that he will prepare a lot of food for him when he visits and then starts to walk toward his house. Gavin looks at Fan Ge walking away and says to Chi Yu that he wants another father, like Fan, since his stories are the best. I hope his child will find another father, but it can't be our little painter. Gammon looks toward his father for an answer and is confused to see him getting out of the car. Chief explains that he is going to get his safety seat while mumbling to himself about how his sister keeps pestering Gavin to find him a partner. While walking toward the car trunk, he spots a car parked there, and an amused smile comes to his lips as he notices Chi Anmo sitting in the car. He knocks on the window, and when it opens, he asks Chi Anmo if he is just going to sit there and not visit his lover. Chi Yu tells him how Fan Ge looks better in real life, and even Gavin wants to call him dad. Only your friends know how to make you angry with just one sentence. Surprisingly, Chi Anmo is not angry by his words and instead says that he will hurt his reputation since Gavin calls everyone father. Chi Yu quickly changes the topic, saying he just wanted Chi Anmo to sense the upcoming crisis and asking him about his visit to Chi An's mansion. Chi Anmo tells him that he is going to work at Hung Sin from tomorrow on. Chi Yu seems surprised to hear this, as he asks if his father is not sincere toward him since the Chi An family's core property is Copa Global. Chi Anmo replies that his father just wants to control him and will dig more pits for him to jump into. Chi Yu comforts him by saying that it doesn't matter since he is not interested in that and says that maybe working at Hung Sin will not be as bad. He then tells Chi Anmo that he is starting a new studio and will approach him some other day for funding. Chi An Mo agrees to give him any amount of funding as long as he will keep Fan Gus safe. He then tells Chi Yu to go back since Gavin is alone in the car, instead of going to his car instantly. Chi Yu asks him if he is just planning to sit there and not visit Fan Gu. Chi An Mo just rudely says that it is not his business. Chi Yu walks back to his car but still decides to help his friend as he messages Fan Gu, asking him to come back down as he forgot to give him some important documents. Meanwhile, Chi Anmo is sitting in the car and is surprised at how he acted on impulse to come to Fan Ge's. Even though they have been apart for only less than a week, he still feels that it has been a long time. He gets out of the car, hoping to catch even a glimpse of Fan Ge, since seeing pictures is not enough. He stares at the building, trying to spot Fan Ge's apartment. He comes out of his thoughts when Fan Ge suddenly appears there and asks him what he is doing here. Fan Ge is confused to see Chi Anmo standing in front of his apartment building, not understanding why he came here. Chi Anmo quickly explains himself, saying that he was just passing by. Fan Ge asks him when he came back to China, and since he didn't know about that, 
He also mistook him for someone else. He silently scolds himself for the ridiculous question. But Chi Anmo calmly replies that he came back a few days ago and didn't get a chance to tell Fan Ga about it. Fan Ga quickly says that he doesn't have to give him an explanation, slightly annoying Chi Anmo with his unclear statement. Without wasting any time, Fan Ga says that he is going back and keeps reminding him that there is no reason to be nervous since they are just friends. We need to count how many times Chi Anmo got friend zoned. Before he can leave, Chi Anmo approaches him and suddenly hugs him. Chi Anmo whispers that he just wants to stay like that for a while, but Fan Ga is just confused if normal friends can hug each other like this. He finally gathers the courage to talk as he reminds Chi Anmo that they are standing outside and can be seen by anyone. Chi Anmo replies that if he is worried about being outed, he can just lower his head to hide it on his shoulder. Fan Ga retaliates that it will be like deceiving himself. His answer amuses Chi Anmo as he comments on how Fan Ga is not so gullible anymore. He is surprised when Fan Ga suddenly asks him if he is in a bad mood. Chi Anmo suddenly holds his head as he complains about having a headache due to his packed schedule. His statement worries Fan Ga, who offers to take him to a nearby clinic if his condition is that bad. Chi Anmo replies that the doctors won't be able to help him since he has a deficiency of Fang Ga. Fang scolds him for lying again, but Chi Anmo just leans closer, saying that his only cure is to be closer to Fang Ga. Chi Anmo has mastered in perfect pickup lines. He slowly closes the gap between their faces and huskily asks Fang if he is willing to help him. Fang Ga is extremely shy about their closeness and tries to escape, but before he can do so, Chi Anmo presses their lips together in a soft kiss. When they pull back, Fang Ga shouts at Chi Anmo for kissing him on the street. Chi Anmo just smiles in return and asks if it would be okay if they kissed in private instead. Fang Ga just yells at him to go away but becomes silent when Chi Anmo softly cups his cheek. The lawyer mentions how he is more cheerful today and asks if it is because he was sad earlier. He softly asks if it is because he is special in his heart. Fang Ga looks away, embarrassed, and tries to deny his obvious feelings. Chi Anmo tells him that he doesn't need to explain himself and mischievously asks him if he is not going to invite him upstairs. Fang Ga quickly refuses, worried that Chi Anmo will try something else when they are alone. Instead of getting angry, Chi Anmo just says that he will wait for the day Fang Ga invites him on his own, and then he will get back today's share with interest. He softly presses a kiss on Fang's forehead and bids him goodbye. Fang Ga just stands there silently, trying to understand the meaning of his words, and when he finally comes to a conclusion, he shouts that it will never happen. Chi Anmo just gets in the car, playfully waving goodbye to Fan Ga. He is happy to get a kiss, as it will last for a few days, and he is willing to patiently wait for Fang to approach him. He is satisfied with the fact that Fang Ga will have enough time to prepare himself until he solves his problem, and he will not leave again after that. A few days later, Fang Ga is sitting in a fancy restaurant with Ren Jia and suggests that they go to some small cafe instead. Ren Jia tells him not to worry about that, saying that it is her treat. She says that they are celebrating in advance since the court's verdict on his case will be announced in two days. Fang Ga tries to argue, but Ren interrupts him, saying that she will even take him to some more places since he is working on a love story now. Fang Ga is quickly convinced by that and promises to buy Ren a lipstick once he gets his paycheck. Ren jokes that he has friend zoned her many times and then leaves the table, just as her phone starts ringing, saying that she needs to answer this. Meanwhile, Joe is out on a date with Chi Anmo and attends a call from her lover, Ren. I am in love with this second league couple. She coldly asks Ren what she is doing, surprising Chi Anmo with her cold behavior and making him wonder who the lucky person is that caught her eye. Ren replies to Joe that she is eating out, which agitates Joe as she asks her who she is with. Fang Ga keeps sneezing as he thinks about how this place is suitable for a date and decides to save it for reference. He looks around thinking how this place must have private rooms and spots Joe standing near a window on the upper floor. Does he wish to visit these private rooms with some special lawyer? Joe, who is talking to Ren on the phone, is surprised when Ren says she is eating alone. She stares at Fang Ga through the window and hangs up the phone, angry at the fact that Ren is lying to her. Joe then turns toward Chi Anmo, telling him that she has something to do, so they should leave now. Chi Anmo offers to drop her off at home but she refuses and tells him that she has to resolve some things here so he can go first. Chi Anmo leaves the table while thinking about Joe's bad mood. While going downstairs, his thoughts drift toward Fang Ga, but he suddenly stops in his tracks when he notices Fang sitting there with Ren. Chi Anmo quickly hides, 
wanting to see the person Fang Ga is with and is annoyed when he notices that it's Ren. He is looking more like a detective than lawyer, trying to spy on his lover. In the meantime, Ren has come back to the table and asked Fang Ga if he has already ordered. Fang Ga asks her if she wants to add something else, and then tells her that he just saw her friend from the airport here. Ren is shocked to hear that and worriedly asks Fang Ga where her friend is. Joe's coming downstairs at that time and notices Shi An Mo hiding behind the stairs. He quickly says that he was taking the call, but Jim doesn't reply as she just looks at Ren and Fang Ga sitting together. Fang Ga asks Ren if she is alright since she is suddenly so pale. Ren replies that she is fine while thinking to herself that she shouldn't feel guilty since she doesn't owe Joe any explanation. Joe is furious to see her so nonchalant and asks Chi An Mo to escort her back. Chi An Mo is surprised by her sudden change of plans and asks her if she is doing this because her lover is nearby. Joe replies that since he figured it out, he should help her and gets annoyed when Chi An Mo takes a step back. Chi An Mo doesn't want to get too involved with her and is about to tell her that when he is interrupted by Fang Ga calling him. Fang Ga asks him why he is here, but Chi An Mo is just hoping that he isn't listening to their conversation. Just then, Fang Ga notices Zhou staring at him and is slightly scared by her stare. He decides to break the silence as he asks if they know each other, but Zhou just rudely scolds him for saying her name so casually. Fang Ga is an innocent, stuck with three evil people. Ren also arrives at the scene as she shouts at Zhou to stop being so rude and asks Shi An Mo what he is doing here. Finally figuring something out, Ren asks Chi An Mo if he is on a blind date with Zhou. Chi An Mo coughs nervously and requests that the two girls stop interrupting him. He then wraps an arm around Fang Ga's shoulder and explains that he went out with Zhou so they could discuss the favor she asked him for. He tells Fang Ga not to misunderstand anything, to which Fang Ga blushes madly and says that he doesn't have a reason to misunderstand. Despite his excuses, Zhou instantly understands the dynamic of their relationship. She then pulls Ren closer saying that they will go first since she wants to discuss something with her. Ren asks what she wants to talk about, and Zhou softly says that she wants to explain about Chi Anmo to her. Ren turns toward Fang Ga and says that she will pay for his food. Fang Ga quickly says that he will cancel his order, but Chi Anmo interrupts him, saying that they will eat together and he will take care of the bill. Ren is not happy with his offer and tries to argue, but Zhou stops her as she quickly says goodbye to the boys. She drags Ren away, saying that she doesn't have anything to worry about, and leaves after playfully winking at Fang Ga. Chi An Mo is worried that things will be difficult now that Zhou has found out about his feelings. Fang Ga just stands there, staring at him, and can't stop himself from wondering about Chi An Mo's relationship with Zhou. After the girls leave, they sit together to eat, and Chi An Mo urges Fang Ga to eat more, commenting on how he has gotten weak in just a few days that they have been apart from each other. Fang Ga replies that he is eating well, not disclosing his habit of eating late sometimes. Chi An Mo is still worried about him and is thinking of finding someone who can urge Fang Ga to eat more. It is so sweet how he cares for well-being of Fang Ga. He softly rubs Fang Ga's head, saying that he must eat three meals a day. Fang Ga replies that he will eat and then asks him why he was here with Zhou. Chi An Mo explains that they were talking about business, and since Zhou is on a diet, he didn't get a chance to eat much. Fang Ga comments on how she looks good and is not fat at all. Chi An Mo is irritated that he has observed her so closely, and he asks Fang Ga if he likes her. Fang Ga quickly asks how he can do that since she comes from a powerful background. His answer doesn't satisfy Chi An Mo, who asks him if she was from some normal family. Would he have approached her? Fang Ga quickly says that it is not the case and replies that Chi An Mo is the one who is in an unknown relationship with her. He instantly regrets his statement but Chi An Mo is already smiling as he asks Fang Ga if he is jealous. He tries to back away but fails as Chi An Mo suddenly hugs him and requests that Fang Ga let him stay like this since he is very tired. Fang Ga just mumbles that he is not sure if Chi An Mo is actually tired or just pretending. Listening to this, Chi An Mo pulls back and assures him that he is just collaborating with Zhou and that there is nothing else between them. Chi An Mo places Fang Ga's hand on his chest and whispers that if he still doesn't believe him, he can touch his heart to make sure that he is the only one in Chi An Mo's heart. Fang Ga doesn't know, but he is the owner of that heart at this point. Fang Ga tries to say something, but Chi An Mo interrupts him, saying that he will wait for him patiently. And during this time, Fang Ga should only approach him if he has any misunderstandings. He requests that Fang Ga only believe him, and to his surprise, Fang Ga softly replies that he believes him. 
After their lunch, they walk out of the restaurant together, and Chi Anmo asks Fan Ga why Ren invited him for lunch. Fan Ga explains that Ren suggested that they visit dating spots since he is writing a love story. Chi Anmo is irritated that Fan Ga agrees to go on a date with Ren but doesn't show it and instead offers to take Fan Ga around since Ren has already left. Chi Anmo first takes him to a famous milk tea shop and is amused when Fan Ga is having a hard time reading their menu. Their next stop is a Starry Night Museum where Fan Go excitedly stares at stars while Chi Anmo is just staring at him. Their last stop is a famous bakery. And after their visit there, Chi Anmo drops Fan Ga at his place. He offers to walk Fan Ga to his apartment, but Fan Ga quickly refuses, worried that he already spent so much time with Chi Anmo and that things may escalate if they go to his apartment. Chi Anmo just smiles at his refusal and comments on how Fan Ga didn't forget what he said last time but he is willing to wait until Fang Ga invites him inside. Later, Fang Ga is sitting on his couch, worried that he messed up things with Chi Anmo. Just then, he receives a call from Ren Jia, who says that she wants to tell him something about Chi Anmo. She reveals that Chi Anmo might be from a wealthy family that has a strong connection with the Chi An family, the owner of Kopo Global Purchases. Fang Ga asks if Zhou is the one who told her that while thinking if Chi Anmo is the one getting married to Zhou, he is relieved when Ren says that it is just her guess and says that he will personally ask Chi Anmo about that. Chi Anmo is in another meeting with Zhou, who asks for his answer regarding her proposal. She says that they will just get engaged and promise to cancel the engagement on her own after some time. Chi Anmo calmly asks her if, if he refuses to accept the offer, she will get Fang Ga involved in this mess. Zhou replies that she will not do this since Chi Anmo also knows about her weakness. She continues that it will be the best scenario if they collaborate, since they both like someone that their families will never accept. She says that he just wants to delay all this for a while, and if Chi Anmo agrees to help her, she will consider it a favor and will repay him in the future. Chi Anmo agrees with her offer on the condition that she will help him when they have to break the engagement. Hopefully their plan will not backfire. Zhou happily agrees to his condition and asks if he wants her to explain everything to Fang Ga. Chi Anmo replies that she doesn't have to do that yet and asks her if she told Ren anything. Joe tells him how Ren is suspicious of his background, and even though she tried to cover it, she is not sure if Ren bought that or not. Chi Anmo's irritation grows toward Ren, while Joe says that he shouldn't be so arrogant about being born into a wealthy family and asks if he will ever tell Fang Ga about it. Chi Anmo coldly replies that his situation is different since he is an illegitimate child, and even he finds it disgusting. So how can he tell that Fang Ga? Chi Anmo need to trust the little painter or else it will only cause him more damage. He then stands to leave, but Joe stops him and says that if he continues to protect Fang Ga like some fragile thing, he will be heartbroken when everything is finally revealed. Meanwhile, Fang Ga visits the law firm to meet Chi Anmo and is shocked to find that he has already resigned. He walks out of the building, thinking about why Chi Anmo didn't mention anything to him. Fang Ga suddenly bumps into someone and is annoyed to see that it is his former boss. He tries to apologize, but Chuan stops him, saying that he was the one at fault and saying that he wants to invite Fang Ga to dinner if he is not busy. Fang Ga quickly retreats from there, saying that he will not give up on the lawsuit, so Chuan should stop trying to coax him. This evil boss pisses me off so much. Chuan quickly says that he doesn't want that and is ready to take any punishment for his actions. He says that he just wants a favor from Fang Ga and asks him if he has good connections with the young director of Hung Sin Entertainment since he helped him back then. Fang Ga is confused by what he is saying and is shocked when Chuan reveals that he is talking about Chi Anmo, and he wouldn't have messed with him if he knew that Chi Anmo is from such a powerful family. Chi Anmo is trying to reach Fang Ga through the phone, but even after several tries, the other is not picking up his call. He is thinking about what could be the reason when his younger brother calls him from the car and reminds him that the banquet hall is going to start soon. Chi Anmo goes to say something but stops when his phone starts ringing, smiling at himself. He tells his brother to go ahead, saying that he has something to do. He picks up Fang Ga's call and goes to ask him why he is not picking up his calls. Before he can complete his sentence, Fang Ga interrupts him by asking why he didn't disclose his identity. I truly hate it when people steal your chance to reveal the truth at your own pace. Wishing for Chi Anmo to get out of this situation quickly. Fang Ga sounds sad as he asks Chi Anmo why he led him on when he was already getting married. Chi Anmo starts to explain himself, but hears Fang Ga's hiccup and figures out that he has been drinking. He tries to ask him about it, but Fang Ga just yells at him, saying that it is not his concern. 
Chi Anmo softly replies that he will visit Fang Ge in his apartment and explain everything to him. When Fang Ge refuses to meet him, Chi Anmo asks him to meet at Galaxy Cafe, the place where they first met, and hangs up the phone. Fang Ge doesn't believe anything that the lawyer said and is planning to not go there. The next morning, Chi Anmo is all dressed up to meet Fang Ge. Before he can leave Chi An's house, his brother stops him and says that his father wants Chi Anmo to join him on his visit to Hung Sin Entertainment. Chi Anmo replies that he can't go today, but his brother replies that he has to go even if he is worried about his lover. He can't afford to offend their father. Chi Anmo is infuriated to hear this and grabs his brother by the collar, but before the fight can escalate, their father comes there. His brother quickly explains to his father that Chi Anmo is just teasing him, and then smugly asks Chi Anmo if he is ready to go with them. Meanwhile, Fang God is sitting alone in a cafe, secretly wishing for Chi Anmo to not show up. Our little painter's wish may come true, but it will only hurt him. Fang Ge is wondering why Chi An Mo is not here yet when suddenly a woman comes and sits across from him. He tries to tell her that he is waiting for someone, but to his surprise, she knows him by name and reveals that she is Chi An Mo's mother. Whenever this woman shows up, I already prepare myself for the worst possible situation. Fang Ge quickly says hello to her while panicking inside of the sudden situation. Before he can understand the situation, Chi An Mo's mother says that she came on her son's behalf and wants Fang Ge to leave him. He tries to say something. But she interrupts him and says that Chi Anmo is an illegitimate child and has suffered a lot because of that. Now that he finally has a chance to gain some recognition, Fang Ge can't hurt him. Fang Ge just mumbles that he has heard this story before. Mrs. Zhou quickly says that she is not making this up and that he needs to leave Chi Anmo. Fang Ge just asks if this is what Chi Anmo truly wants. His question catches the woman off guard, but she quickly replies that Chi Anmo will get everything he wants once he goes back to his family. Fang God is confused by the situation and replies that he just knows that Chi An Mo has been unhappy recently, and as his mother, she should know about that. Mrs. Zhou gets angry to hear that, and she replies that Chi An Mo can't be unhappy since he is already living in Chi An's mansion. When Fang God tries to argue that Chi An Mo is not this kind of person, Mrs. Zhou replies that he hasn't even known Chi An Mo for a long time. Fang God's patience slowly slips away as he stands up and shouts that he just knows that Chi An Mo doesn't even care much about being an heir. Their argument is interrupted by the sound of clapping as someone praises Fang Ge for his courage. He turns around and is surprised to see Chi Yu standing there. Oh, I love Chi Yu at this point. His timing is always perfect. Chi Yu directly focuses on Zhou Li as he asks how she can help her husband mess with her son. He sharply asks her if she really thinks Chi An Mo will be able to bear all the pain she is inflicting on him. Zhou Li mumbles that she is doing this for his own good. Her answer only infuriates Chi Yu replies that she is incurable and then drags Fang Ge away from there, at Fang Ge's home. Chi Yu and he are sitting facing each other as he asks Chi Yu if he has known Chi An Mo for a long time. He softly mumbles how he can now understand why a famous editor like Chi Yu approached a newbie writer like him. Chi Yu replies that he wasn't lying when he complimented Fang Ge and asks him if he is really not mad. Fang Ge innocently asks why he should be mad, to which Chi Yu quickly says is nothing. Chi Yu is amused by how unsuspecting Fang Ge is, but it also makes him proud of how lovely he is. Fang Ge says that since Chi Yu has known Chi An Mo for a long time, he wants to ask some questions about him. Chi Yu happily replies that he can even write a book about Chi An Mo's dark past and will happily reply to all his questions. Chi An Mo rushes toward Fang Ge's place, worried that everything will be a mess since Fang Ge has already met his mother. He raises his hand to knock on the door but decides to just barge inside, thinking that no matter what, he will never let Fang Ge in. As he enters the apartment, he goes to call Fang Ge, but is surprised when he finds him having a pleasant conversation with Chi Yu. Chi Yu is the first one to notice him and quickly excuses himself, saying that he needs to pick up Gavin from school. As they are left alone, Fang Ge is confused about what he should say, but to his surprise, Chi An Mo marches toward him and suddenly hugs him. Chi An Mo doesn't let any chance go to hug Fang Ge and recharge his battery. Chi An Mo mumbles against his shoulder that Fang Ge can't leave him. Fang Ge softly pats his head, amused by his cute actions, and then softly asks if the story he told him in Bali was about him. Chi An Mo just pulls back a little and confesses that he is an illegitimate child who is being used as a tool by his father, and his mother only cares about money. He softly cups Fang Ge's cheek and asks him if he looks down on him after finding the truth. Fang Ge quickly replies that it is not the case, and the truth only makes him feel sad for Chi An Mo. 
His statement makes Chi Anmo think that he is pinning him. And when Fang Da denies that, Chi Anmo sharply asks him why he feels sad about the situation. Fang Ga can't find the words to explain himself. Chi Anmo just gently asks him not to run away and asks if he really doesn't care about his marriage. He leans closer, saying that as long as Fang Ga is against his marriage, he will immediately reject her. Fang Ga tries to say something in return, but he suddenly recalls his meeting with Chi Anmo's mother. It makes him realize how Chi Anmo suffered all his life as an illegitimate child, and this helps him make a decision. He says to Chi Anmo that he doesn't want to drag him down and that it will be best if he returns to his family. Chi Anmo replies that he is not dragging him down. In fact, he is the most important person in his life. Fang Ga argues that he must have looked forward to getting recognized by his family all his life. Our little painter just wants what is best for Chi Anmo. Even though he has no concerns about Chi Anmo's background, he still notices that he is always unhappy when his family is mentioned. He continues that he is aware this has nothing to do with how powerful Chi An's family is, but since Chi Anmo has a chance, he should really go back. In reply to his long speech, Chi Anmo replies that if he has to choose between his family and Fanga, his choice will always be his lover. Fanga quickly says that he doesn't want to force Chi Anmo to do anything. Chi Anmo presses a kiss on his cheek and apologizes for hiding the truth from him. Fang Ga realizes how Chi Anmo has suffered more than him in the past and replies that he is not mad at him. Chi Anmo slowly pushes him back onto the sofa and hovers over him. Chi Anmo says that he will soon resolve this complicated issue with Chi An's family. Before Fang Ga can say something, Chi Anmo continues that he has always dreamed of having a complete family since childhood, but it has never been a Chi An family. He leans closer and whispers that, as long as Fang Ga helps him form a small family, he will be happy. They don't get a chance to kiss as the door bursts open and Gavin barges in. Quickly pulling away from each other, they sit straight on the sofa, with Fang Ga heavily blushing while Chi Anmo glares at the kid. Gavin asks what they were doing, but Chi Anmo just scolds him, saying it was adult business. Chi Yu interrupts the conversation and comments about how it looks like they are made up. He doesn't give them a chance to reply, as he reminds Chi Anmo that he should go back since his father is waiting at the company and he has to attend the banquet. Chi Anmo is ready to argue, but Fang Ga grabs his arms and asks him to go ahead, assuring him that he will not hide any more from him. Chi Anmo attentively listens to him and leaves the apartment without arguing. Chi Yu joins Fang Ga, saying how Chi Anmo just listens to him now. Fang Ga just stands there, staring ahead, which makes Chi Yu realize that he is actually very uncomfortable and was just pretending to be okay. Chi Anmo soon reaches the Chi An family's headquarters and is welcomed by his brother's sharp comments. Trying to provoke him, his brother comments that he thought Chi Anmo would not show up because he was busy spending time with the little fox outside. His father coughs, grabbing their attention, and says that he won't care about Chi Anmo's relationship with men. But Chi Anmo must find a suitable wife, preferably Miss Jo. His brother tries to complain, but his father just scolds him for being rude. He again turns toward Chi Anmo and says that he thinks he is getting along with Jo since her private life has calmed down and he can't disturb that. Chi Anmo keeps his sharp comments to himself as his father continues to say that he also has to maintain a good relationship with Bo Wen. Chi Anmo replies that he understands and has already drawn a line with Bo Wen, but he is the one still clinging to him and even has a connection with his second brother. Chi Anmo's comebacks are epic. His brother tries to say that he is lying, but Chi Anmo just asks him where his recent cooperation with Bo Wen's family came from. He continues to hear how his brother promised to give Chi Anmo to Bo Wen as long as he helped him gain power. His brother is startled to hear that and tries to explain himself to their father. Before he can say something, his father slaps him and orders him to help his elder brother tomorrow so he can learn some manners. Their father leaves after that, and as soon as they are alone, Chi Anmo gets punched by his brother. Chi Anmo catches his brother's arm when tries to punch him again and says that if he tries to harm anyone dear to him. Chi Anmo will not stop at a single slap. Meanwhile, Fang Ga is taking a walk with Chi Yu, but is in deep thought, to distract him from his thoughts. Chi Yu asks him if he thought about writing a love story like Chi Yu suggested last time. Fang Ga replies that he doesn't think he can write something like that. He is startled when Chi Yu asks him if he didn't get any ideas from his date with Chi Anmo. Seeing his reaction, Chi Yu decides to stop teasing him and tells him not to worry about Chi Anmo since he is able to handle himself against Chi An's family. Fang Ga replies that he has learned a lot today and will need some time to digest everything. 
He then thanks Chi Yu for sharing stories about Chi Anma with him and says that he will leave first. Chi Yu smiles widely as he replies that it is not a big deal since he is best friends with Fong Bo's husband. Chi Yu has already imagined them married. I am also guilty of this crime. Fang Gut tells him not to say such things and walks toward his apartment. He can't help but think that his journey with Chi Anma will be much harder than he originally thought.